That is our reality. That was six decades ago. Fast forward. It's only until a month ago, last month in June, that the French parliament finally signed and ratified a law which now stopped the African countries from depositing their funds with the French Central Bank. Just last month, why did it take so long? Because the fear of, of uh, uh, the fear of France and what France could do to any nation that chooses to oppose France. Let's also look at other nations, the British, the Italians, the Germans, the Portuguese, the Belgians, as they were giving independence to their colonies in Africa. They all gave limited political independence. Economic liberation was completely held back from the Africans. To this day, the average African country, 75% of the employers, the multinationals, they are from the countries that colonized them previously. So if you were colonized by the British, the majority of the employers, the big companies in your country are British. If you were Portuguese, if you were Belgian and German, they control the bulk of the economy. Most recent example would be Glencoe, a company called Glencoe, it's a British company in Zambia, had not been paying taxes for decades. And the country has been working with them to say, you must pay taxes. This is not fair. If the average Zambian on the street is paying taxes, you gotta pay taxes too. When the government finally said, if you do not pay your taxes, we are going to revoke your license and you got seven days to, to pay your taxes. Glencore responds by laying off 11,000 people. So when you lay off 11,000 employees, you're basically impacting the lives of at a minimum 55,000 people. And that's the reality for the African, for the average African president. If you push too hard, they have a way of getting to you. And those games are being played every day to this day. But the president of Zambia stood his ground and he put out a tender and he said, anybody that wants to come and get these two mines, you're welcome to. And of course, requests came flying in. So then Glencoe realizing that they're losing this game, they called back all the employees and they came back to the president with their tail between their legs and they started negotiating in a more meaningful way. This is going on all across the continent. The multinationals that are doing business in Africa are not paying taxes. They have safe havens that go back to colonization. Britain is well known for having the largest safe havens. They underreport what they are extracting out of the ground. They underreport how much they are selling, whatever it is that they report. The end game is billions, if not trillions, of money that should stay on the continent is going out through the safe havens that are being used by the multinationals. A lot of illegal farming, um, illegal mining, illegal uh, logging, illegal fishing, illegal trade in uh, exotic plants and, and animals, all that combined, you are talking trillions getting out of the continent. You look at what's going on in DRC today and, and Cameroon, they have satellites that are showing them nowadays exactly where the minerals are. The poor villagers don't realize they are sitting on a humongous gold mine, on a humongous coltan mine, on a humongous diamond mine. So what do those who want those diamonds, who want those natural resources do? They take a few soldiers, they take a few young people, they give them alcohol and arm them with M16s and AK-47s, they go kill off a few people and the villagers run away. They stay behind and continue their illegal mining. This is going on up to this day. I'm just giving you the tip of the iceberg in order to get a feel for how Africa is under siege. 
And for those who question, why aren't things getting better? Resume change. Let's change leadership. Tell me one African country that has a change in leadership and things have changed. None. Why? It's because the fundamentals have not been addressed. You got to understand, Berlin Conference, they met from November of 1884, the colonizers, to February of 1885, precisely to organize themselves so they can see to it that Africa and her children are forever defeated and dominated. I repeat, they met, the colonizers, they met in Berlin at the invitation of the Chancellor of Germany and his sidekick, King Leopold, to precisely see to it that Africa and her children are forever defeated and dominated. That was 136 years ago. The little bitty countries that you find today, those are little bitty countries designed to fail, countries designed to never succeed, that should they try to succeed by any means necessary like we always do as black people, we are survivors. We are easy to destabilize. That strategy that was put in place during the Berlin Conference 136 years ago remains in place today. Some say, but how, Ambassador? Well, look at this world. If we were to assume this world is a boxing game, would you take a lightweight boxer and throw them in the ring with a heavyweight boxer? Would you take a wannabe boxer and throw them in the same boxing ring with the heavyweight boxer? You see, what they did during the Berlin Conference, they gave these countries sovereignty and independence. Prior to independence, those countries were subjects of the masters in Europe. At independence, these countries were given the same sovereignty as the big boys. So Togo has the same sovereignty as China. So Guinea has the same sovereignty as the United States. Malawi has the same sovereignty now with EU. So when you go to the world to trade, Togo is you're supposed to, to, to be negotiating with China and, and, and you all are equal, you have sovereign nations. There's no parity there. It was done by design. So African countries will be defeated at every turn. The unfair trade practices that are making it difficult for African countries to add value to our natural resources. It was all by design to make sure that we are forever defeated and dominated. To make matters worse, during the Berlin Conference, they imp implemented the rule of divide and conquer. And the way they did was to take tribes that were united and living together in harmony, broke them up into tiny little countries and gave those countries to different countries that spoke different languages give it a couple of generations, people who were once one big family, they don't even realize their family. I use an example of driving from Zambia. You're speaking English and you're going north. Pretty soon you are in DRC, you're speaking French. You keep going a little, a little to the east, you are now in Equatorial Guinea, you're speaking Spanish. Go a little bit north, you are in Southern Cameroon, you are speaking English. Keep going, you are now in Northern Cameroon, you're speaking French. Before you know it, you are in Nigeria, you're back to speaking English. It was all by design to cause maximum destruction. I'm talking about the building blocks for Africa's total destruction, which were created by the Berlin Conference that remain in place today. It is precisely why when you want to travel from one part of Africa to another, you got to go to Europe first before you can come back down. Why? Because the air spaces were limited thanks to the Berlin Conference. It is precisely because of those boundaries that were created that fuel oil from Mozambique has got to get out of no Mozambique first. It has to get out of the continent first only for Zimbabwe right next door to buy back 30 times. You can stand 
with one leg in Zimbabwe and one leg in Mozambique. And yet, Berlin Conference made it very difficult for us to trade. It's very difficult for a man in Malawi with his Malawi kwacha to buy a product in Nigeria, in, 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 uh, in Nigeria Naira. It's easier to convert the kwacha to the US dollar, the kwacha to the, to the euro or to the British pound and the Naira the same way. All these technicalities we take for granted, they ultimately impact trade. And when you impact trade, you destroy the nations. There is no development. It's easier for a product to go from uh, uh, Egypt, to go from the United States to Egypt, than for a product to go from South Sudan to Egypt. It was all by design. So when I talk about the, under, the fundamentals not being addressed, the fundamentals for Africa, they must be addressed through integration, economic integration, political integration, melting of the borders, and completely destroying, killing, and, bur and burying the Berlin Conference. The rule of divide and conquer that also made the Africans believe that everything African was bad and everything European was better and more desirable. They sent the Christians, the missionaries, to also teach us. We didn't know about the color black and white before the, the uh, missionaries came to Africa, before the colonizers, the settlers came to Africa, but they told us about the color black and the color white. And they told us, taught us about the white angels and the black devils. Who has seen the angels? Who has seen the devils? But then they turn around and say, the devil, the, the devil is black and you people are also black. And the angels are white and we are white. Jesus Christ is white, even though the Bible says his skin was crimson. We know it's because when Mary and Joseph were running from, from Herod, King Herod, they were told to go to Egypt, not to Europe. Because in Europe, they knew he would stand out like a sore tooth. In Egypt, Jesus Christ would blend with others who looked like him. Jesus Christ was a brown man. But they said, never mind that. And even though we white people don't look like a white piece of paper, don't worry, we're white. Now let's go to church and you need to get on your knees and you must worship a white Jesus and you must worship the white, white angels. And of course, let's dog out the devil that looks like you black people. It was all by design to criminalize blackness, to make us hate ourselves, and forever be looking to be something that we can never be, white. Have you ever stopped to think about that? Every day you go to church and you worship an image that does not look like you, an image that will never look like you and you're dogging the image that looks like you. Complete, total destruction of an individual from a very deep subconscious level. So it is that us black people are forever trying to be something that we can never be. So how do we think we can be closer to being white? We think we're educated now. We have a job, we have a house, we have a nice car. We feel we're closer to white people. And now we want to run away from those who look like us because we've made it. All these unnecessary material things that make us believe we're getting closer to what we have been programmed to think is better. And we're busy running away from ourselves. Which brings me to the next pillar of Africa's issues. It is the mind. We have so much self-hate. We do not like each other as black people. We have been programmed to dislike anything that has anything to do with ourselves. So where do we begin? We call that the legacy of slavery and the legacy of colonization. No amount of education, no UCLA degree, no Harvard degree, no Oxford degree can decolonize you can cleanse you of the legacy of slavery. 
is through understanding our history, understanding that you're part of somebody else's agenda, that you're riding somebody else's train, and the train is meeting their agenda, meeting their needs, and none of those needs are part of what you need. It's through understanding our history that we can wake our people up, particularly black people, to say, listen, this is what is really going on. And until you understand that there are pathways that have been in place, there's an agenda that has been in place to see to it, black people are forever defeated and dominated. How then do you get out of it? You don't go to the doctor unless you know you're sick. As black people, we have been so brainwashed that we don't even realize what our normal is. We have been so beaten down. I talk about post-traumatic stress disorder. For us black people, I call it CTSD, continuous traumatic stress disorder, because our stress continues. We may not be lynched as we know lynching to be, but the lynching continues in other forms. It doesn't matter where you meet black people. South America, Australia, India, Europe, United States, even in Africa, we're the most disrespected race. Even those foreigners coming to Africa, they feel superior to the African, simply because of the color of our skin. Last time I checked, the ability to produce melanin was not a crime. But we seem to be fallen victim because we have the ability to produce melanin. So Africa 101 is about a recap of our history, our journey as black people, as a race, where we have been, where we are, what has been done to us before colonization, after colonization, after independence, what continues to, the games that continue to be played on us, the World Bank, IMF, and the predatory loans they give to the African nations, and the private lenders and the games they play with the Africans to where Africans will forever be paying loans. The average African country is spending over 30% of their GDP on loan repayment. It's unheard of. How does a country grow? There's so many games being played so many policies, and they keep changing. If it looks like Africans are getting a leg up, the, the rules of engagements keep changing. To what end? The black race, if you look through history, is the only race that has been loyal to the white man. Completely loyal. With all that, they raped us. They lynched us. They tortured us, they shot us, and still we remained loyal. Here we are today, 2020, and the bit goes on. Africa 101, the wake up call, was my effort to wake up the black race as well as the white race, to make them realize that as black people, we are simply asking that we be treated the same way they want to be treated. That what little boys and little girls in Europe want is what little boys and little girls in Africa also want. We are not asking anything more. We are asking the world to do what is right, what is just, and what is fair. Not only to black people on the continent, but to black people around the globe. Systemic racism, bigotry, and hate have no room on earth. And the perpetrators of those abuses, to them I say, you may think you're doing a disservice to the black race, but guess what? You're also doing a serious disservice to your children, grandchildren, and generations to come. Our children, regardless of their skin color, 
they deserve to live on earth free free to live on this earth the way they wish without boundaries without restrictions and just truly love each other and enjoy humanity regardless of your race ethnicity social status political affiliations gender it is a free world that's what we want so africa 101 is waking up not only black people but also black people to say this world is ours let's enjoy it together as equals because we are created as equal under god i thank you